in our GTE Pro class, though, and we do not apologize for spending so much time watching fantastically close racing. It is Porsche, Ferrari, Corvette. Porsche, Ford, Ford. That's your top half dozen. Seventh place is the 71A, of course, a Ferrari. Eighth is the 91 Porsche. Ninth place is the 64 Corvette. And rounding out the top 10 is the 66 Ford. For fans in the UK, Andy Prio with that pit stop error by the team. Unsafe release of the 67 car is in 11th place in the class ahead of the 94 Porsche. Rizzi Competizione rising up the order there, 13th. The BMWs are 14th and 17th, and the two Aston Martins sandwiched between them, 15th and 16th. So the two Astons, which were running right at the front of the field early on, are losing ground heavily. Roman Rusnov has stopped for a fuel, a full fuel fill this time, as has Pierre Thierrier in the 36 Senior Tech Alpine car. Don't release him there, because there's a Porsche coming by. Andre Negrau is in as well. Well, let's get down to Spirit of Race. Francesco Castellacci had a high-speed scare. That was a proper Code Brown moment in the Porsche curbs, Duncan Vincent. Yeah, so that, as Martin Havens just said in my ear, that was a proper Code Brown moment going through the Porsche curbs. Talk us through what happened. Yeah, it was a few laps. I was feeling a bit of vibrations on the front. And uh, in this third Porsche, I uh, went a bit too early. I really touched. The, the inside curb and I, uh, and I and I lost it. I was not feeling so confident in the in the in the front and was very hard in those laps already. You had to drive it back on four very flat tires. It hasn't caused any other damage to any part of the car. No, the car seems okay. We we uh, we are all good. Just uh, the tires and we changed now. Thomas is in the car and it's a long race. It's still eight, 19 hours to go. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, it's. Uh... Not exactly ideal for Francesco, as he said, 19 hours to go. Still a long, long time in this race to try and pull something back, and it's never over until the checkered flag drops. However, from his point of view, I'm sure he'll be a little bit more tentative going through that left hander next time. Now, the difference in the AM class compared to the Pro class is they don't have the same tyre restriction. So yes. those could have been a lap old, and although it costs more money, it doesn't actually affect their tyre allocation, the fact that he's shredded the entire set. However, of course, it has dropped the car further down the order. Yep. So Thomas Floor is taking it over, left the pit lane, and they are now 14th in class. 16th in the AM class is the 98 Aston. It is back out on track. But this is the GTE AM leader. The Group C wins 956 livery on the 4GT. And Ben Keating, uh, his Keating Motorsport team, is uh, Felipe Fraga at the wheel at the moment. Oh, Sarah having a little look at Vantour. Lawrence Vantour in the 92 Porsche, the GTE Pro Class leader with Daniel Serra behind him, Mike Rockefeller, and then Earl Bamba. The same four as we saw 45 minutes ago, Alan Mamanish, but in a slightly different order, and it's about to change again. It is, but to remember that you also have got a new left side tyres on that Ferrari as they now come down to a right-handed corner. So I think this time Serra will try and swing it around the outside, squeezing in, but no, Van Tor pushes across and uh, reminds him that he's still got the inside line. To be honest, if Serra's going to get past, he is going to have to muscle his way past. May not want to take that risk at this moment in time, but that's where it's going to be. Well, of course, his tyres will be slightly fresher at the end of the stint than Lawrence Van Tour, who's got four old ones. Let's talk about the end of a stint with David Heinemeyer Hansen down at Jackie Chan DC Racing. He's just got out of the car. David, you've just stepped out of the car. You're looking kind of sweaty there, but uh, a very good stint, a good consistent run, good fast laps. Yeah, I mean, it didn't always feel like that. You keep catching the uh, the traffic at the wrong moment and thinking, oh man, I'm going so slow. But then you see the cars ahead of you not really necessarily pulling that much ahead. So that's just a give and take of Le Mans. It feels so good when you get a clean lap, which happens once every 10. But then you just deal with it for the rest of the time. You got really held up coming into pit lane by the Ferrari. Do you know how much time that actually cost you? Yeah, 20 seconds. Yeah, that was really brutal. I, I Very disappointing that he didn't pull over and just let me by. I was flashing my life trying to make every uh, move to um, to get past, but 
I don't know. And that was really frustrating. That was a good 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, uh, uh, he did have four flat tires. We'll, we'll maybe give him benefit of the doubt, but maybe a bit of bump drafting for him next time. Yeah. Um, I guess that's just how it is. I mean, yeah, I've made mistakes here too, so that's how Le Mans goes. Long race. When do you next step in the car? Will it be dark the next time you're in? I think uh, we're trying to do triple, so in six stints, which uh, in, in prototype of Fortune is not very long. We only run 35 minutes a stint, so I think uh, three hours or so. Thank you very much, buddy. All right, thanks so much. RLRM Sports, John Ferrano in the barriers, Alan McNish. Looks like a relatively innocuous nudge, but it has dislodged the nose. Yeah, it's a, it's a tetra rouge. Uh, where he's gone off there, I presume he's uh, sort of dropped the wheel on the outside on turn and spun around and went uh, through the gravel trap there. It is, uh, it's not the first time they've been off with that car through the course of this weekend, uh, but it certainly knocked him down. They were, at that moment in time, they were down in 17th in LMP2. Battle between Corvette. Safety car, safety Ooh, car is safety out. Safety car. Right, so there's three safety cars on this circuit. One at the start-finish line, one is at the exit of the first chicane, and one as you come out of Arnage. And they're supposed to all go around at the same speed, and you queue up behind whichever one you catch, and then they all go back in at exactly the same point as the Gulf Bar. Ah, That's at the same point on the circuit. Yes. So that is the LMP1 Dragon Speed car at the same point on the circuit as uh, we see the LMP2 of uh, Ferrano off. So is that something that is... Well, you see the safety cars came out in yeah. between the, there. Well, because it's almost impossible in uh, in all the traffic there is to find the gaps. That's No, uh, it just comes out and you have yeah. to log in behind it yeah. when it gets to a certain line. And but, so that's a little bit of luck of the draw as yeah. uh, now we've got a change here with Fernando Alonso out and Nakajima in. Well, I wonder if they'll be triple stinting as well. Nakajima's door yes. didn't shut close there, did it? Yeah, it's, it's closed now. Yeah, but, but it, yes, they will be triple stinting. Yeah, it hadn't closed properly. Somebody's just spotted that. You could see it, the gap was open there. What they do is uh, the driver helper, he basically gets everything done and then the last thing he does is check the door. Yeah. And if it's not locked in by the driver doing it, because the driver can't, with the position, uh, get his hand over very easily to close it. So therefore the driver helper, all he does is sl slap his hand over the top and knock it into place. Uh, Nigel Moore for into Europol in the pit lane. So too is the number eight car of Fernando Alonso handing the car over. So Alonso doing a double stint. And hands over number eight car to Kazuki Nakajima. Well, I'm, I'm sort of hoping that the, they haven't split the battle. I think that's the 92 Porsche, isn't it, behind that safety car? Yes, yes. yes. and yeah. in fact, there's the Ferrari, there's the Corvette, there's the next Porsche as well. So the top four in GTE Pro have not been separated by the safety car. So Lawrence Vantor, Daniel Serra, Mike Rockefeller, Earl Bamber. Uh, how far back was Ryan Briscoe? 3.3, he'll be in that queue. So will Sebastian yeah, the Bordet there, there, fifth and sixth. So will Miguel Molina. But 30 seconds behind them... No, no they'll still be in the queue. Makoviki might if not... If you think it's a, it's a minute, it's roughly a minute and yeah. 10 seconds is your gap between one and the next yeah. safety car. And uh, so I think it'll pull all the GT pros up. But just wow. looking at it again, van der Zander was in the Dragon Speed car, rejoining the circuit at the point where we had the LMP2 and the gravel. So I wonder whether those two are connected. It'd be good if we could get a replay if the cameras actually caught it. Frustration there for... Uh... Frustration, because he's held at the end of the pit lane. However, yeah, yeah. it's known fact that it's going to happen. And the other thing is that uh, Alonso had to come in because he had done his 11 laps, and so he'd be out of fuel. Yeah. And that's just unfortunate timing for them. Don't forget, these guys lead the championship. They're trying to win the race and the championship here. <laughs> Their only rivals in the number seven car may just have gained a bit of an advantage here, but they need something major to go wrong with the number eight car. Well, Fernando is out of the car, and Duncan Vincent is hovering nearby. If we get a chance to speak to last year's Le Mans winner, we will do so. Also try and catch up with the number 10 by Collis car. <laughs> Right now, so RLRM Sports' John Ferrano is back on terra firma. Let's see. Now, in a situation like this, 
Will the marshals, if they can, sort of clip the bodywork back on rather than risk it coming off and creating more work for themselves? Yeah, not, not really. Well, they're not allowed to, are no, they? Maybe yeah. That's outside like assistance. Yeah, maybe, yeah, but outside assistance has put him back on the track. He didn't get out by himself. Yeah, but that's because it's a safety-related yeah. item. He was in a position that if another car went there, then that was pretty grim. I would, have, I would also say a broken nose that might fall off in front of someone else would possibly yeah. fall under yeah. that situation. However, he is going now and will crawl back to the pit lane. The question now is, actually, the voice you heard was not that of Eduardo Freitas. It was joint clerk of the course, uh, 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 race director, Alan Adam. The question now is, how much of a housekeeping list have they been accumulating so that if they go full course yellow or safety car, they can get other jobs done? Putting floppies back in, sweeping up some debris, all of that stuff. I think there's gonna be a lot of very busy marshals around this track. Yeah, there are the safety cars at the moment. One of them is going into Mulsan Corner. Uh, one of them is in the first chicane area and one of them is just about to cross the start and finish line coming down into yeah. Ford. So we are currently looking at safety car C, it's called. Can you just to be sure, remind me of the rule when the safety car lights goes out. I can pass them after the line uh, and just maintain my speed before that's correct. So it's the second line after the first chicane is when you can overtake. Just clarity there where you can overtake or where other people can overtake you. Let's get down to Toyota and hear from Duncan Vince. We're just going to let the, the cars go past, Martin. The cars are going to go past us just now, so um, Fernando is standing here. We're going, to, we're going to just quickly jump in in a minute. Just too noisy just now. OK, a little bit of quiet. Let's hear from Fernando Alonso. Uh, we missed him at two seconds. He, he is here. We'll get him in just one second. He just wants to do when the, seat, the cars are passed. So uh, he's having a quick uh, quick interview just now with the circuit television. And we will get him in literally two seconds time. But he seems quite happy with what he's done. Uh, I think he should be there. Second place. That's not first yet, but long way to go. And the other thing, Duncan, just for information, he's been right on the pace of the other car all the way through from when he jumped in. So I can imagine he was... a quite happy in comparison to his Kobayashi teammate. And, and one of the other factors in last... Fernando, Fernando, you must be very happy. You've been right on the pace with the other car all the way through your, your good double stint there. Yeah, it, it was OK. I think overall uh, I was happy with his team, but uh, it seems that uh, from the warm-up we are very slow on the straights on our car eight, so we cannot match uh, the, the pace probably on the other car, but uh, yeah, as long as uh, we are close to, to them and uh, we are close to the podium, I think is what we want for the championship. Sorry, I did mean triple standing up. Uh, quadruple. Uh, quadruple, sorry. Alan McNish has given me wrong information. Can you believe that? <laughs> Always, Alan. Yeah. Um, okay, did you have a nose change as well? Was it a change of frame for you guys? No, it was a problem with a light, apparently. So one of the lights, the headlights, was not working properly. So we just make a, a change to, to make sure that uh, we are ready for the night. Are you looking forward to racing in the dark again? Because remember last year you were in the rhythm of the night. I am, I am. I think uh, the night is uh, where uh, I think our car will come alive. But uh, at the same time, as I said, from the warm up, we have some concerns about uh, our pace and our uh, straight line speed that um, I, I think it's going to be difficult to overcome that. Thank you very much, Fernando. I shall go and correct Alan McNish and <laughs> I'll enjoy that. <laughs> Very good indeed. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you for that, for Fernando Alonso. And he was, he was mighty. It was definitely one of the cornerstones of last year's win, his pace in the dark. And we'll look forward to seeing that again. Safety car is coming in this lap. Well, this lap means in the next few seconds, because they're just coming out the first chicane. There we go. So the white line you can see on the track. No, nope, it's uh, they're coming up to it now. Off. That's the white line That's now, white so line. you can overtake. Well, the safety car has just pulled off to the left-hand side. So safety car C and A and B have all pulled off at the same time. So you do concertina up the field, but into three gaggles. Yeah, but that means that in GT Pro, the first 10, 11 cars are all in a line yeah. and uh, within eight seconds of each other. So it's really brought everybody together in GT Pro. Ricky Taylor's in the middle of that, in that black and yellow highlighted 37 Jackie Chan DC racing car. He's going to try and get by all these guys in a straight line. He took over from David Heinemeyer Hansen, but they lost out by being 
are having to come into the pits behind the uh, punctured car of Francesco Castellacci. Jamie Campbell-Walter, you understand in the end that most incidents on the racetrack are going to cost you time, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating. No, it's... Uh... You have to take the rough with the smooth. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. But as we were saying, really fantastic battle. Top 11 cars in GT Pro didn't get mixed up by the safety car there. Here they come. And a change of the lead, possibly. Yeah, Sarah goes the long way round the outside. The Ferrari has been superb oh. at Indianapolis, and he does it again. And again, remember earlier on on the radio, when we we're under safety car, Lawrence Van Tour was being told, OK, if he comes, he's got outside, he's got left side fresh tires. If he comes and you can't defend him, drop him behind, back to fuel saving. Yeah, but now I think uh, Van Tor's got a bit of a run because Serra went a little bit wide coming out of Arnage. And Van Tor's right in the slipstream, tough to overtake into Porsche, especially when we're looking at Patrick Dempsey there. And right behind, Mike Rockenfeller was side by side, trying to take Earl Bamba for third. Rocky around the outside into the Porsche curves. Bamba touched back in front. Rocky was going to have to be very foolhardy to try and sit around the outside there, Alan. Yeah, I've only ever done it with uh, LMP2 cars, never with a car in the same category as myself. Ryan yeah, Briscoe. Big, brave stuff. Sorry, Ryan Briscoe right behind in the Ford, the pale blue and red car. That's the 69 car. Miguel Molina right behind him in the second of the Ferraris. There it is, the top of the shot. And the Ford passing, that is uh, Makaviki. In fact, Makaviki trying to come back at Sebastian Bordet for seventh place. So Bordet stays in front of Fred Mako. Marcel Fessler at the back of that queue in the Corvette with Billy Johnson with him. And Andy Brio is in that queue as well. So as you said, 1 to 11 in GTE Pro, as close as they were at the start of the race. Fantastic, isn't it? Isn't it five <laughs> and a half? Five hours, 15 minutes into the race, and they're all nose to tail. Yeah. Brilliant to watch. As a driver, I was never a big fan of safety cars, but as a commentator, I am. <laughs> sometimes, but sometimes it breaks up a race. In this case, we are lucky that the leader of the class, the safety car jumped right in front of him, so everybody jumped up behind and concertinaed up. Yep, it has, and it's really brought everybody here in terms of Lopez, Nakajima, the two Toyota drivers at the front. It's a minute and five seconds, so that is hanging on in there. But look at this. He's definitely got a run in here as Van Tor is just going to pull to the left in a second. And he's got enough, and yeah. he's going past. Saying if you can attack him, you don't have oh. to fuel save. Oh! Sarah's making it really hard, and the Ferrari has got more top-end speed, it seems. No, the Ferrari moved across. If you watch a replay of that, if we can ever see one, the Ferrari moved across and squeezed in towards the Porsche, which then took speed away from the Porsche. Yeah. It's like uh, the side-side drafting that they do in NASCAR, and it actually dragged the speed out of the Porsche. Very yeah. clever, yeah. and so you can see that he's managed to keep himself in the lead. Great bit of racecraft. He, he's, he's really doing a great job in the 51 car, the 71 car, rather, the 51 oh. car. Oh, and look behind, here comes 71, steaming down the inside. God, oh, crikey, that's uh, the 63 Rockefeller Molina Bordet battle there. Yeah. Three abreast as they came down in towards the second chicane. So the Ferrari getting ahead of Sebastian Bordet and Ryan Briscoe as well since the safety car. And now right up behind Mike Rockefeller flashing the lights. Here I come. Pulls out. He's going to try and do the same thing. Fantastic battling. What it has done, and, and actually right at the tail, you can see Andy Brio trying to pass Billy Johnson at the back of this queue. Top 11, all covered by 10 seconds. But what it has done is it has blown away the rest of the field. So the BMWs, Ricci Competizione and Aston Martin, lost a minute. Yep. And Aston Martin can't afford to lose that minute. They were already behind the eight ball, yep. having led early on. Yeah, but 18 hours and 41 minutes to go. That can swing again. There's a bit of light flashing goes, goes on with Miguel Molina just reminding Mike Rockenfeller that he's here and he doesn't intend to stay exactly in the position that he's in. It's like a sprint race, this. It is like a sprint. It's, it's like a 20-lap World Touring Car race. In fact, I was just thinking about that, seeing the headlights. Uh, the winner of one of our most recent races in Zandvoort said that the guy behind him obviously had a problem with the headlights. They were flashing on and off all the way through the race. 
that in what there was a phase for a while where you could press a button on your steering wheel and the headlights would continue flashing on their own until you pressed it to switch them off again. And then they introduced a rule saying it can flash no more than five times consecutively, and then there had to be a pause. Yeah, I don't know about the Audi, but the Aston used to be push once and it yeah, would flash, flash five times. Flash forever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, now, five, now, five flashes. now five flashes. We had it yeah. push once and it flashed for 10 seconds. Yeah. And it was actually us that caused them to put yes. the rule in. Yeah. And I asked for it to be an automatic flash because I was sick of actually pressing the button to yeah. flash. Yeah. Never and, expend and, more and, energy than you have to. And by the way, those Audi lights used to really blind you. Well, they melt the paint off the back bumper when they're close <laughs> enough, don't they? Well, we had, uh, we had very good halogen lights, and then we went to laser lights yeah. at the end. The laser lights uh, were able to have a better clarity without the dazzle. They were really, really good, and then they came onto road cars from there. And, of course, in the road car, when there's an oncoming car, it actually part dips some of the LEDs so that you get the spread of light around the car, but not directly at the car. And actually, in racing, that would be really useful as well. Cups of tea coming out and everything. It's obviously just about time for a change of shift, I would think. So into the pit lane comes the Ferrari and a change of driver as well. So this is the 71 car. Miguel Molina gets out. And who gets in? That's not Birdie, so that's Davide Rigon, isn't it? Red, white, and green. So 95 Aston Martin, they have lost a lot of ground. The Astons were sandwiched between the BMWs, but now it's the other way round. Aston Martin's Darren Turner in 95 ahead of Slow Augusto Aston. Farfus. And as even as I look at the timing screen, the Aston Martin starts to slow. He's back going. He must have gone wide at Mulsanne yeah. Corner, maybe. It's still... It's all right. Well, what's the top speed? 284, 85 down to Indianapolis. That's not bad. But you can't miss a gear anymore in these things. I suppose the electronics can do it for you, but it uh, doesn't tend to happen. Am I right in saying the Astons got bopped this morning? Yes. Yeah, they yeah. got. Uh, they, got had a, uh, they all had BOP changes. Most of the, the most of the category actually had some weight taken off them. The Aston Martin had a little bit less fuel capacity, which may or not actually affect them if they weren't able to do an extra lap anyway yeah. on what they were able to do. And they had, I think it was uh, they would another change in terms of their engine performance power. Now let's take a look at what else happened behind that safety car. Keating Motorsports leading in the GTE AM class with the wins Ford, now a minute and a half ahead of anyone else. And I wonder whether they got a little break in the safety car queue as well. Wei Lu for JMW in third, Ewan Hankey in the TF Sport Aston in second, and Felipe Fraga leading the GTE AM class for Keating Motorsports. Well, the front of the field, Jamie Campbell-Walter, as we expected, the only hybrid cars in the race, the Toyotas are 1-2 ahead of SMP and Rebellion. Rebellion have had problems, SMP not so much so far, one sticking wheel nut. But what we expected in LMP2, which was a knockdown drag out fight, hasn't really happened because this is where all the action is right now in the, in the factory GT with, with all the factory drivers knocking each other's door handles off. Yeah, I mean, we quite often see the GT is the, is, the, is the best battle. But interestingly, one of the Rebellion cars has been OK, and it's only eight seconds behind uh, Sorokin in the SMP yeah. car. Um, so they're, they're actually quite close. Uh, but this battle on screen now is phenomenal. Yeah. Still, you know, 10 or 11 cars within 10 <laughs> seconds after five and a half hours racing is, yeah. is phenomenal. Different manufacturers. And let's not forget, these guys are proper pros. Uh, a lot of them racing in Formula E or DTM or yeah. uh, other forms of motorsport. Some of them, like Rocky, for example, he, he turns up here for his one race a year in, in, the, in the Corvette, and yeah. he's bang on the pace. So these guys are real pros. But of course, it's his one race at Le Mans, but for all of the Corvette racing guys, it's their only race. The rest of the time, they're racing in North America in the IMSA WeatherTech series, and Rocky there is the third wheel on their, on their long range. Uh, so he'll do Daytona, he'll do uh, Sebring, and he'll do Petit Le Mans as well. So the big, long races, yes, they're, they're, they are three-handers. For World Endurance, the standard six-hour race, it will be a double driver lineup because these guys are fit enough and you don't need to put in a gentleman driver and all of that stuff. So these guys setting an absolutely storming pace. Welcome back to the booth, uh, Graham Goodwin. And Graham, 
at this stage, with the safety car having concertinaed everybody back up, all of the fuel saving looks like it might have gone out of the window a little bit for the Porsches, but they're still running second and third. They're still very much in podium contention. Well, I was uh, just about to actually ask, what on earth have you done with GTE Pro Field? They left it here, it's nice and orderly. Come back an hour later, 10 cars, uh, nose to tell, fantastic stuff. And we're back to what it looked like at the very start of the race. Um, and yes, it, all it took was a brief safety car to actually achieve that. But it seems to have closed up those two or three, two to three car battles yep. into one seething mass once again. It did. Basically, there was the entire field with two P cars in it and a little contact there, the ARP Bratislava car. Uh, that is the better placed of the two Keating Racing Ferraris. That's the uh, Kessel Racing Ferrari. Uh, that's Michaela Gatting. Michelle Gatting. Michelle. Michelle Gatting. Michelle Gatting. I'll get there in the end. Michelle. Uh, that car just outside the top 10 in the uh, GTE AM class. The other thing, Graham, that you'll need to know, and anybody just joining us after their breakfast, lunch, dinner, or other intermediary snacks, is that the number 98 Aston Martin, which was seriously delayed earlier on, has been seriously delayed further with another issue to the car. A runoff into the gravel trap for Paul Dallalana at the entry to the Porsche curves, and a long stop to make sure that the gravel was no longer uh, aboard the car and in danger of getting into bits and pieces that you don't want gravel in. Yes. So they are the last running car, Dragon Speed's stricken number 10 car, back in the garage again. Um, and lots of work going on on there. And in fact, I think we might need to send pit reporter Duncan Vincent over to Dragon Speed to see if he can find Elton Julian and, and get a handle on, if they've got a handle on, what is going wrong with the number 10 car. It's a tale of two swan songs, isn't it, for the old lady Aston Martin, uh, the TF Sport car, uh, sitting at the moment pretty, and very pretty she is too, uh, second in class. An MP2 battle comes through the GTE Pro Field, past the, the uh, now eighth place golf racing car that was third. Here's your leader, Roman Rusinov, for G Drive. Well, and fending off uh, what looks like a spirited run from under the ground. He's yep. pulled that gap all the way back, hasn't he? Both of them are new to the car. Both of them were forced into the pit lane under full course yellow, as we see the uh, Algarve Pro car jumping the curbs to avoid the 98 Aston, getting in a little hot there. They were both forced in under full course yellow, had to take a five second fuel stop and go back out and then come in the next lap and full fuel. So the gap between them didn't change one iota, basically, but they were just uh, forced to make another trip through the pits. I was just going to say, on the way back from uh, just wandering down through the paddock for a short while, uh, there's a, a gathering wind, and it's getting very dark out there. And I don't mean it's getting closer to night. I mean the clouds are gathering. And we're, as I, I'm about to say that, uh, race control saying they expect a light shower. Level one, that's not something we need to worry about too much. Expected at 20.35. That's in about eight minutes. Yeah, I need to minutes. find my coat. If anybody has found my coat, can I have it back now? If it's going to rain all night, I want my coat. Did you sew your name in it? Did you sew your name in it? Didn't sew my name in it, but okay. it's got my notebook with my name on it in its pocket. So uh, enjoy that as well as my coat, whoever picked it up like <laughs> fingered Larry's. Uh, Sergei Sorokin in the pits has moved the number three rebellion up into fourth place. And that only matches the number three's number of nine pit stops. So did number three have an unexpected extra stop for no, something? No, the answer is because Alicia has just pitted in the number 11 car, so the three car yeah. will go uh, ahead again yeah. into third position. Uh, OK, so Mikel Alicia is in the pits now. Yep. Sorokin stayed in. Uh, was Alicia in before? Yes, he was, because we heard from Stoffel van Dorn a few minutes ago with Duncan. So, yeah, this is Alicia double stinting. Well, as I left, uh, after information to the pit lane, information to the pit lane. We are expecting some drops of rain at 20.35. We are expecting some drops of rain at 20.35. That says the voice of Rui Marquez, a long-time colleague of Eduardo uh, Freitas and assisting in race control today, highly experienced race control official. I misidentified him as Alan Adam then, so uh, that was uh, more Portuguese than French accent. Uh, a bit of, bit, of, bit of rain in five minutes will mix it up, won't it? Well, what I'd like to see on that weather map is a bit of movement, which direction the cloud is coming from. Remember, we were here the, the other evening at the end of qualifying, and aircraft from the airfield were taking up 
in the direction that the, the, the cars go down the pit straight as the TF Sport car of Ewan Hankey uh, outbreaks himself. Uh, that was uh, that's the car that's in second place in the AM class. Yeah, just tripping over one of the Kessel Racing Ferraris and avoiding 80, contact. It was 83, I think, with Michel Gatting still aboard. Yeah, so the, so two nights ago, when it was gusting, they were taking off into the wind, which was a headwind for the cars going down the pit straight. I noticed when I was coming to the booth before the race that planes are taking off in the opposite direction of such circuit travel. So what rain was coming in from the southwest two days ago may be coming in from the north... I don't know, unless the wind have swept, swept round again. Uh, Duncan is uh, making up another new song, Spots of Rain in the Pit Lane, apparently. He's a poet and he knows it. Anders Fjordback taking over the high-class racing entry from Dennis Anderson. That car has now slumped to last in LMP2, having been in the top six early on in the race. That car just emerging after a 15-minute pit stop, so whatever the issue was, for high class racing that appears now to be in its immediate past but uh, it's a long way back i'm afraid for anders for dennis and for matthias besh battle between teammates lauren van thor and Bamba. but the other way around this time of course uh, just uh, what half an hour 45 minutes ago it was van thor uh, attacking bamba it's now the other way around and uh, we gonna have another quick change in the Coventry team in just a moment with Martin Haven stepping away and good. Jim Bowen back with us in a moment. Good good to see uh, a Dunlop and a Michelin car in LMP2 so I was expecting to not quite see that but it looks incredibly evenly matched. It does. Uh, to explain that we've been talking about this tyre battle in a single WC season you're allowed three different specifications of dry weather tyre. Uh, towards the end of the last calendar year Michelin uh, rolled out uh, their C-Spec tyre, that proved to be very popular and has attracted an awful lot of new customers to Michelin in Ilames. The same uh, cycle applies there too. Dunlop then rolled out theirs for Sebring and gave the Michelin runners a good thumping in what was a uh, very odd race indeed. Um, but it's been, well, swings and roundabouts. And here, you're absolutely right, nose to tail, the crowd with uh, Rusinov. It is Dunlop from Michelin, then another Michelin runner third with Pastor Maldonado over a minute behind this battle, but then behind him, it's the two Jackie Chan DT racing uh, cars again on Dunlop, so it's a real mix-up, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in, it, obviously in LMP1, we only have Michelin, so uh, it, the rest of the, the, the classes is the, only the LMP2 cars that have uh, a tyre war, let's call it. Um, and, and of course, we've got Goodyear joining us uh, as, of, as of September. Uh, indeed, I think Goodyear uh, arrives with, uh, with the uh, WC then. Uh, Dunlop will actually uh, retain the rights to actually campaign LMP2 cars, and for that matter, GT drops of the rain reported on track. Drops of rain reported on track. Hi guys, what did I miss? Uh, oh, nothing really much happened. <laughs> uh, the Mayhem. Front, the front 11 GT Mayhem. Pro cars are still within 10 seconds. Yeah. So, uh, LMP2 I've been is, watching that. LMP2 <laughs> is four tenths apart. Pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Speaking <laughs> of our LMP uh, GT. GT Pro Battle. Three cars, nose the tail. We have word uh, precipitation out on the racetrack from Eduardo Freitas. What's it like down in the pit lane, Duncan? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty wet. You know, it's starting to intensify. There's a good word. Uh, it would be nothing in Scotland, but right now there's a lot of people starting to run about, and uh, the, the, the awnings are coming down on the pit perches or whatever you call them in America. No, they've got a pretty. Got to break in, Duncan. We got a pass for the lead in LMP2, or not quite. Uh, it all came to a bit of a head there, didn't it? On the Molzan, it looked like Andre de Grau found his way around the outside, but then the Rebellion uh, got involved in that tussle. That gave Roman Rusinov just enough wiggle room to squeeze the Alpine in a uh, boxing manoeuvre with one of the GT cars, and it's all to restore, but for how much longer, who can tell? The uh, most visual sign you can see now are the rain lights on the Ooh. rear of the G-Drive car shining in the front of the uh, Alpine, 
almost that off was the track, a bit, wheel to wheel. That's aggressive. Yeah, by the G-Drive. Yeah, very aggressive. Squeezed him way, way over Romanov. to driver's left. Russo, Roman Rusinov uh, really did not want to give that place up, did he? But he's, I'm afraid, been less left to uh, give best to the Alpine. Andre Negrau goes by, gets a quick flash of the headlights in salute, whether or not of the traditional or slightly more rude version. You can leave uh, that to your own imaginations. And he powers off through Malzahn Corner into the lead of the LMP2 race. Another cracking battle. We said in the lead-up, guys, that uh, it was going to be the classes to watch in this race. GT Pro is underlined that in big red letters and underlined through that in big green pen too. LMP2 is serving up the entertainment as well. Uh, this is a cracking race. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to watch, isn't it? The battles going on through different classes. Uh, this rain is saying level one until about 8.38, so approximately 14 minutes. And that's a tricky time for drivers when yeah. you're in the lead of a race or second, then you're having a close battle. When they get to this portion of the track that's raining, there has to be a, 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 an air of caution about it because it's so easy to make a little mistake. Probably not on the tarmac, but the, if a kerb starts to get a yep. little bit wet, you, you, you can so quickly just lose it. And the rain has stopped on the pit lane, according to Duncan. So this is a, a moving shower. And again, this is such a long racetrack. It can be raining in one spot, not in the other. And it takes a, it really takes a lot of water when the cars are circulating like this, the tires are hot for them to have to start thinking about tire stops and that sort of stuff. A little eight minute shower here isn't really going to have but that Jamie, big of an impact. But Jamie, one of the biggest challenges surely on a track like this is not being absolutely sure what the conditions could be like, what the grip levels could be like at one corner. Right. Uh, you know, lap after lap is such a long lap. Fuck me, it's just a joke with this whole bit. Absolute joke, how much power it has. Yeah, Tim Ford, just a couple more laps here. We're gonna stick to the plan of what we talked about. Brian Briscoe having a little whinge about Rocky's horsepower. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, going back to the grip, yeah, what you tend to do as a driver is you've obviously got a windscreen. You can see the wipers flashing on there. Uh, you you see the spots of rain on the windscreen, and, you, and you're like, oh, wow, here we go. But what you actually do is you drive to the grip that you have. Uh, so mm. if you don't feel any different, you just keep going flat out, actually. You can tell the judge by the, the, the rain spots on the windscreen how hard it is, but you just keep going until you suddenly turn into a, you get a bit of understeer or a bit of oversteer, and then you go, OK, now it's starting to get slippy. And that's that moment where you go, OK, I might just stay off the curb for the next, you know, wherever the rain is, basically. Um, but actually, watching these guys, they're, they're, they're still just pushing flat out. They're just bonkers, really. It's, uh, it's been a fantastic battle involving just about every car in the field yeah. uh, at some point or another, whether or not it's in a battle for the lead or a battle for a significant place further back. Uh, the Aston Martins were involved in the early part of this race. They've fallen right back. Perhaps the only car that hasn't, or the only three cars beyond that, that haven't really been involved at the sharp end, the two BMWs, and the racing Competizione car. Oh, trouble for the golf trouble. car. 86 car, eighth in class. It's Thomas Prining in the car. He put that car third in uh, on the grid after qualifying and was running That's, well up. He's uh, he's on the straight from Mulsanne, the first kink yeah. down towards Indianapolis. Yeah, so I think he's on driver's left. In the pits for the 38 car, this is Hopin Tung. Another Third. car in championship contention. So this uh, car comes into the pits out of third position. Report is the Baikola's car back out onto the track. Radio issues are fixed. Yep, good news for all lovers of Austrian LMP1 efforts. Both of them. Away goes the 38. Follows the Baikola's down towards Dunlop. The high intensity rain lights. As soon as the track is declared wet, rain lights must be shown. There goes the Baikola's, clearly not up to speed yet. It's uh, Paolo Roberti at the wheel of the number four car. Paolo, who we've seen in the FIWC before, putting some remarkable performances in GTM Corvettes, amongst other things. Oh, Bamba here, held up actually by Thomas Fleur, I think it is. 
Uh, he was, they were all one second apart, these three top uh, GT Pro cars. And you can just see on your left of screen, you'll see old Bamba, he's lost out there. He has indeed, uh, fairly significantly so. Through comes the high speed chase that is the battle for the overall lead in GT Pro and 27th place overall. Well, we've got uh, spawning that pattern, Jim Roller, a couple of oh, oh, big, oh, one, big oh, my one heavens. for 64. Oh, that's a Marcel bit of big chance. Marcel Fassler has gone off at driver's right in the porch. Safety car called immediately. Safety car comes out immediately. You'll see oh, him get squeezed here by the 88. Oh, that was a 78 car involved as well. That was a big hit for Marcel. Who's that car? That's the that 78 was... uh, Proton car. The... Well, the, the 88 was the one that made oh, sorry, contact apologies. with him. 88. That's top. No, not 88. That's the Golf racing car. No, 86 is the Golf car. 86 ah. is the Golf car. Uh, it was 86 and the 88. We're in, we're in that uh, group car. of three. Uh, yeah, so Thomas was... Brining has got the car running again. What quite what happened there? Whether or not that coughed again. Thirty six is instantly into the pits together with the G drive car. And thirty six and twenty six again nose to tail out of pit garage. Well, we've got the safety car. Let's go to Duncan. Yeah, I've got Fred here, Fred Makabekis. First of all, standing on the pit wall there, you've handed over, you've got Ginny Bruni in the car just now. Is everything going to plan? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, the guy there, uh, we have a good speed. We got a small brake issue. That's why we took, we lost some time, but uh, we, we are in the game. I think uh, we'll see the race is long. We just need to have a look what will happen with the safety car, because I think we lost one safety car now. We'll see how it's going on. Yeah, obviously a little shower of rain as well, but that's not come to anything. It won't harm or change any track conditions. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it's uh, this race is really difficult, uh, especially at that moment. The weather will become a little bit uh, more unstable. We'll see what's going on. Thanks for your time, buddy. Good luck. Well, Jimmy Campbell Walter, we've had a chance to see from the in car from Marcel Fesler what transpired there. The 88 car in the pit garage. What, uh, what, what's your take on that one? Well, I mean, tricky, the 88 car, well, I think he slowed up to let that gaggle of cars pass. Um, perhaps the 88 car just saw two cars, though. Yep. Marcel came through at quite some speed through the first left, obviously went up the inside of the slower car because he doesn't want to lose any time. And the 88 car has turned in and clipped the back rear wheel of him, turned him sharp right. Yeah. Hashino san has been off the racetrack though three times already. Yes. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and at some point. We were, we were talking about this earlier. This is the time where the pros have all started in the yeah, car. Yeah, that's right. And then maybe the, 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 the other pro's gone and now the bronze gets in. Mm -hmm. And these guys are on a bit of a white knuckle ride, but they're in their own race. You've got to get your way past them safely. And it's, it's never easy at that moment. Um, when you're out there with the, with the guys with less experience who are much slower. And I think, to be fair to him, he was trying to get out of the way, Oli Gavin not wanting to talk yeah. to anyone, mm -hmm. understandably. But um, They've had but a horrible there's, there's always this moment of, you know, could Marcel be more patient? No, why should he? You know, right. he's got a race to win. And you go if there's a gap, you go for it, because that's what racing drivers do. And unfortunately, yeah, the 88 car didn't see it. Yeah, and, and this is a byproduct we sit here and we revel in this great nose to tail racing for 24 hours, but sometimes this is a byproduct of that. Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, yeah, uh, fuck. Uh, the force pressed into me. In yeah, I copy that, copy that. We just saw it, we just saw it. You okay? Oh, it was a hard one, fuck. Um, okay, jump out. Yeah, I copy that. Sorry, guys. I don't know if we could do anything else. Yeah, sorry for that. For... Oh, fuck. Sorry about the language, as you can understand. It's pretty pretty angry at that point and probably a little distressed. That was a hard hit, as you, as you heard him say. But it, as what you were saying and what I was starting to say was, when this racing is this tight, 
you can't give any quarter to the slower cars. Uh, You've got to keep pressing on. Otherwise, the rest of the, the, the field's going to be gone on. It was a perfectly righteous overtake. And yeah. I didn't see him yeah. deviate from his course no. at all. It, no. he, he got hit. It wasn't, yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. where he hit the car he was trying to pass. He had pe almost had made the clean pass yeah, when he it got was, hit. Yeah, it was yeah, front left right. to rear right. So, you know, he's, he's just yeah. turned in and uh, not seen him. But... You know, let's not forget, it's a big crash as, as oh. you know, apologies for the language, but uh, Marcel's going around about 140 to yeah. 40 miles an hour there. Uh, and he's turned sharp right into a barrier. Luckily, one of those new Safer safety barriers. barriers. Well, yeah. um, Re remember, leading up to this race, we have had a number of occasions when we've been debating the changes to the Porsche curves here. I'm very glad that change was made in that point. That, that, that's, a, that's a point at which that could have been a heck of a lot oh. worse. You could hear in Marcel's voice, he's hurting. Yes. Um, and it, it's clearly distressed. It's clearly race over yes. in any meaningful fashion and probably well, totally You can see 54. where it, here, here's on the left, you can see the safety barrier. So he dives up the inside, the boom, Porsche clips him. And luckily, oh no, did he hit the safety barriers? He yes, did he did. Oh yeah, he did. So uh, you can see these new safety barriers, the blue ones on the right hand side. He dives up the inside, boom. Turns him sharp right. Uh, no, he didn't. He hit the concrete no. wall. Well, well, first, first, and then he, and then he, yes. and then he went into the saber barrier. But yeah, that concrete uh, wall's a hard hit. A couple of years ago, that would have been uh, straight into a concrete wall. Yes, uh, for sure. Out comes the 88. The in, uh, instance is under investigation. That will be an interesting. Uh, one to keep track of who is going to come out in the number 88. Um, I guess it's not Hashino san. He's uh, whoever's in the car is going to be waiting at the red lights for the safety car chain train rather to go. Um, Our second full course caution in the last hour. Yeah, and you, could, you saw with um, the body language from Ollie Gavin distressed. I'm sure for two reasons. One is he would be very concerned about. Uh, Marcel's condition, but of course there's, there is the race. This is the biggest race of the season. It's a massive race for Corvette racing, and that's an awful way for it to finish with the 64 car. Doug Feehan doing what he does best, management of his drivers, helping just, Oliver Gavin deal with it there. I'm just wondering if Marcel could try and drive that back. Well, we wait and see. They're pulling the car off the uh, off the wall there. It's, it's got to get a lift to wherever it's going. Uh, either way, Huge amount of damage, certainly to the front of that car. The Golf Racing Porsche. Uh, well, that's the car, remember, that stopped out on track. Yeah. But then was the next car in line to be dealt with by Oli Gavin had he not been turned into the wall. The other thing uh, to say, it was a hard hit to the side of that car. I don't know if you noticed this, but the... the, the Team Radio. Well, you can't hear that. So. You're doing well, you're saving. You're doing well. And just for your info, we look the plank during the stop. It looks OK. Looks all good. But keep, keep driving like you do. It's, uh, it's very good. OK. Face-wise, it's OK? Yeah, face-wise, it's fine. Just uh, unfortunately, Kite will uh, catch up our two safety cars, so they will uh, bring the gap back. There will be a lot of cars between us, but uh, they will be the same too. So this is two full course cautions in the last hour of taking this lead down to 23 seconds between the seven and the eight. Well, I'm thinking is the number eight on the back of this queue. I think he must be. He is. Uh, the other point I was going to make is before uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, trade and see whether or not uh, Toto appears at the back here. You notice that the impact with the side of the Corvette broke the right rear. Mm. The right rear was not pointing in the right direction at the point just beyond the point of impact with the Porsche. Uh, and it is still Hashino San aboard that car. Uh, could we see the Toyota there? I think so. It's the second one from the yes, back. Yes, it is. Yes. There he is. Yes. So that has massively helped out the number eight car. It has, and that looks to me to be game over the 64. Yeah, the rule is Marcel can try to work on that car. Yeah. Uh, he has to stay within 20 <laughs> meters of the car. Um, the body language suggests that uh, that yeah. is unlikely to be the case here. You can see the emotion of a tough week starting to uh, show on some of the faces of these mechanics as they were celebrating Corvette's 20th consecutive race here, 20th anniversary race. Where she first came here in 1999. They've had eight victories so far during that time. 
Well, they're in the mix with the other car at the moment. Oh, yeah. So uh, the 64 car looks done to me, I'm afraid, and the body language of the, the uh, mechanics, technicians, the engineers were just plain upset. Uh, and that will be, because that's a shocking thing to see oh, yeah. to one of your own team. And for that matter, to the motor car you brought here with hopes of extending what's been a glorious run for Corvette Racing. Reminds me a little bit of Rocky's uh, crash that he had in the Audi on the way down the first kink. Uh, he was up the oh, inside yeah. and the Porsche turned in the Ferrari. to the kink. Oh, Ferrari, yeah, Ferrari, sorry. Ferrari turned in and, on him. And it, it did the same, exactly the same front yep. right with the mm -hmm. rear left and turned Rocky sharp left. Uh, it's, you know, the, these guys, uh, the amateur drivers who come here, we need them. Oh, uh, yeah. But they're not professional racing drivers, no. and we can't forget that. And these guys are on a white knuckle ride. They oh, are, yeah. you it, know, they're on the edge themselves. I think uh, that's uh, one of the best descriptions I've heard of it. That's exactly right. It's they're a just white knuckle ride for them, and, and they haven't got the, the they're, they're so 100% engrossed in the driving part, trying to keep the car on the track, that actually the, the peripheral part, which is watching out for all the other cars, is difficult for mm -hmm. them. More difficult than it is for us. For us, it comes a bit more natural. Sure. You know, well, we, everything's slower for you. Slower, anyway. we've got more capacity, the, right. the processing is yep. in the brain, uh, yep. the little men up there running up and yep. down, and his are, his are slightly over mm -hmm. overstressed, and um, he's probably looked in his mirror, lifted off, seen two cars, and gone, okay, well, they passed me, I'll turn yeah. in. Yeah. And it, uh, such a unfortunate accident for the Corvette and you know they're looking so strong as well um, but yeah that's Le Mans isn't it that's, yeah, that's uh, yeah, exactly. multi-class racing well they're in the same class actually but uh, yeah difficult one yeah a few drops of rain a few drops of rain now until five minutes past nine and the safety cars have also while they have helped the number eight Toyota they have kind of They've cut the, pull, uh, pull, the, cut. the they've cut in half the GT Pro uh, battle because yep. it's now first five cars, right? Am I uh, that, six right? cars, first, uh, five cars. Sorry. Apologies, yeah. And first then we've five got, cars are 12 seconds apart, and then we've got another four, and then four cars after them are in the second pace car queue, so they are two minutes behind. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, very clearly required this time the safety car. Oh yeah. Uh, a lot of debris and clearly intervention required of an and urgent nature there. I mean, does it need the safety? I don't really see what's the difference between a full course yellow. They're going the same speed. I guess I agree with you. I'm, uh, I'm, well, I don't know I, what the difference is. I guess there's a couple of differences. One is, generally speaking, the way that Eduardo Freitas has called these things in the past is if you have got uh, corner workers in line of fire, then he will generally call a safety car out. It's different here. It is different here. We also know there was definitely uh, debris on the track. If there, there was damage to the Corvette before it hit the wall, yeah. there's debris on a track where you've not got clear line of sight coming into the incident zone. So that might well have, again have been mm -hmm. I mean, pretty clearly. Well, again, given the fact that it's in the Porsche curves, yep. j just that's it. That in of, of itself yes. makes, I think that's, makes it much different than any place else on a, this race That's a massive factor here because the, lot, the sight lines are very much shorter. And yeah. uh, I think in this instance, yep. I'm fully supportive of it. It's a shame. Oh, I'm yeah, fully supportive of it in this instance. And uh, fingers crossed, you know, we could hear Marcel talking on the radio. Just hope he's OK. He is one of the good guys, one yeah. of the really, truly nice guys in any form of racing. And a winner. And a winner. Oh, yeah. And a world champion. Here. We saw just a second ago some of the uh, Toyota mechanics and you notice on one of the lap belts uh, a wheel nut. Some of you might be thinking, why has he got a wheel nut on his belt? Well, when, when, when they do the pit stops, uh, occasionally uh, from the gun, the wheel nut comes flying out. So uh, a spare. The mechanic always has a spare in his belt. He'd carry so. a spare alternator if he had a pocket. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually while we're watching on the safety car. Hang on one second. Uh, you are under safety car You are under safety car Copy the same as before. Same as before, C17. So don't work on the tires too much. We will probably have to uh, stop anyway for fuel. And uh, in case we would refuel until, uh, after just after the safety car, if it's not too long, we could give you a new set of tires uh, to be warm. While we're on the safety car, we've just got a quick appearance from a guest uh, in the booth here. 
and it's a man who until fairly recently led the LMP2 class uh, on his debut at Le Mans in the great race. Your Brutet, um, that looked massively exciting. Yeah, it was very, very cool. Nice close racing with the Alpine car. I have to say fair play to, um, to Thierry and uh, Lapierre for fair racing. So that was all good and, yeah, good and fun. Good yeah. stuff. It's developing into quite a battle between your car, between the uh, the Sigler Tech Alpine, but also between Dunlop and Michelin. We're about to go green flag racing, by the look of it. Let's uh, go quickly down to the pits and Doug Feehan. Thank you very much for that, Jim. Uh, yeah, Doug, first of all, a, a disastrous way to end the 24 hours very early, but we heard Marcel talking, and that's the most important thing in that incident. Yep. Well, he was talking and walking, and I have to tell you, we have a high level of confidence. There's no question we believe we have the safest GT car in the world. Uh, all the safety systems, not only that we've originated and designed ourselves, but those obviously mandated by the uh, sanctioned body, our crush zones in the car, our seating, side window nets, all those things come into play. And uh, you heard Marcel on the radio and you saw him get out and walking around. But you know, you like to always be precautionary. So uh, he's down at medical, they'll check him out. I'm sure he'll be back here. Probably a little sore in the morning though. Uh, but the car looks uh, to be damaged significantly enough that we won't be able to repair it, get it back in the race, which is unfortunate. But we've been here with one car before and uh, this team knows how to respond and uh, only one car can win. We saw you talking with Oliver immediately after. What, what were you saying to him? What was the, the kind of the, the, the team manager role there? Well, Ali I, 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 I didn't have his radio in, but he saw the impact and he knows how serious that was. And he just wanted to make sure that we had communicated with, uh, with Marcel. He wanted to make sure that Marcel was able to communicate with us. We reassured him that he was talking and he was walking. Be able to report further once we get the medical report back. But uh, right now, we think he just, he's going to be fine. Doug, thank you very much. Thank you. Doug Fian for Corvette Racing there, guys. Bit of trouble down at Mulsan Corner. Looks to me to be the number 60 Castle Racing Car in trouble down there. We'll keep you appraised of that. Uh, well, clearly explained there the body language you saw from Ollie Gavin, and completely understandable as well, Jim Roller, that uh, Ollie wanted to be sure that things were A-OK -okay with Marcel before he made any comment whatsoever into a microphone or a camera. The standards of professionalism from Ollie Gavin have never really changed through that long, long career, have they? No, they certainly haven't, as we watch this absolutely fantastic battle in GTE Pro carry on. This is the battle for the lead. Daniel Serra and Lawrence Ventor. This is the this is the same uh, same guys uh, that were same guys that were duking it out when when you and I took our last break. Absolutely, there's going to be a so, slow zone by the way down at Mulsanne Corner uh, for whatever has occurred to the Castle Racing number 60 car. We still got uh, Jupiter Tech with us. Uh, we saw again when that went back to green flag running, Jub, that uh, it's still close. Uh, Roman seems to be just hanging on in there just uh, for right now. When are you back in the car? Um, I was going to be back in the car at 11, but I think it will be a bit later now since Jeff still have to do two hours. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, because of the safety car, all the stints have been extended by a bit. Uh, but, yeah, when I get in, it will surely be really dark. So, <laughs> and that'll be Looking your forward to that? <laughs> Absolutely. So the, that'll be your first experience of uh, full night running here, certainly. It will, it will, yeah. No, and I'm really looking forward to running in the dark again. And uh, it's, it's been good in, uh, in in the qualifyings, but you know when you come down to racing, you also have to overtake and be a bit more yeah on it. We'll pause again. Uh, I just think we've got Duncan down the pit lane with Darren Turner. Duncan, I have that. I'm very lucky. I've got Darren Turner. Not many people, well, not many people get them. Everybody wants them. But uh, you also, Darren, you were out there when that rain shower started. Was it out the back of the circuit or was it just confined locally to the pit lane? It's pretty much just uh, turn one, two, three and over the crest there into Dunlop boat. So it wasn't too bad, but obviously with those conditions, it's a big risk. You stay off the paint, stay off any of the curves and just until you get a bit of an idea what the grip level's like. But um, at that point, I'd already dropped, dropped behind Johnny. I had a mischief issue down at uh, Molsan. So I dropped behind and it's quite nice then because you've got someone else in front of you to sort of show you where the grip is so um you know johnny johnny had to take the risk and i could just see what he was doing and 
what condition, conditions were like, but uh, yeah, it's not always great when there's just a localised area of rain. When do you get back in the car? Will it be dark by the time you're in? Yeah, I, I guess if everything runs to plan now, it should be about four hours time. So I'll go off, get a bit of food, try and get a bit of a cat nap and uh, yeah, be ready to come back in the middle of the night. Yeah, thanks for your time, mate. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, several changes to report. Uh, one is that Jamie Campbell-Walter comes back into the booth and tells us that it is now raining uh, here uh, in the Ford Chicane. Uh, into the slow zone here, by the way, where the number 60 car is requiring assistance. We are 20 seconds from a quarter of the way through this great race. Andrew Moller, that last set pit stop to the GTE Pro class, we saw a significant change. We certainly did. The 92 car came out ahead with Kevin Estra behind the wheel now. Wholesale driver changes, so Estra's in the 92 Porsche. The 51 AF Corsa Ferrari came out second with Daniel Serra behind the wheel. The Corvette came in third, the 63 car, and there you see the uh, 60 car being pulled out of the gravel trap. And I'm going to see this see uh, the incident in with the background. Just lost the back end of the car, gravel only, so no impact with the barrier there. Let's just uh, finish up the, the conversation with you, Vanuta. Just about to ask you before uh, we went to the interview about this battle between Dunlop and your car, Michelin, on the Signatec car. Uh, we've been through a, a, a kind of period of dry running. It looks like we might get a little bit more greasy. How do you think that's going to pan, pan out at this stage? Yep. I think for us it shouldn't be a problem if it's like a little bit greasy, um, especially if we have to put the cut slick. Our cut slick intermediate tire is quite good compared to the Michelin uh, one. Um, but the only issue is that. The Michelin seems to be a bit faster in the first in, and then we are a little bit faster in the second and the third. Yeah. Better than. Beginning to get a bit slippy slidey yeah. uh, out of uh, Mills and Corner. This is the battle, by the way, for third position overall. And actually, this pair are being caught by Sega Sorokin as well. So it's going to be a three car train for third position. As then a break car from second position with uh, Kazakajima bringing the car in uh, onto pit lane. Seven in the hands of Pichito Lopez still leads the race. Expecting this to stay close throughout? Yep, you're hoping so. Oh, uh, side by side oh, with wow. the Porsche curves. That is quite a pass. 